Today on Pistons Live, what's better than being 1-0 in the new year? Being 2-0 in the new year. And because a broom won't do on this snowy Sunday, we'll look at how the Pistons can shovel the two-game series from the Celtics. In the world of Isaiah's, the Pistons only know one. Let it be known, another has arrived, and we've discovered plenty of reasons why you should like him. Yeah, baby! Sadiq's sweet stroke has shot the Pistons rook into Dwayne Casey's circle of trust. We'll find out why it's making his mama proud. Choosy moms choose Pistons Live, and it starts right now. Who turned the lights on? Pistons host their first matinee of the new season today in snowy downtown Detroit. Where so far, Jeremy Grant has shot lights out this season. He's been averaging over 26 points per game in his last four as a Piston, and they'll need every one of those to hold off Jason Tatum and the Celtics here in game two of their Detroit double dip. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome inside Little Caesars Arena to Pistons Live here at the Ram Desk alongside one-time Piston and Celtic Grant Long. I'm Mickey York. The Pistons have emerged from the ranks of the NBA's winless, and now they'll get greedy and try to grab back-to-back -back Ws. Like Friday, it won't be easy, Grant, but the Pistons should be helped by the return of Blake Griffin this afternoon. Hey, listen, it's almost like a back-to-back -back situation, almost like a playoff situation. Here's the thing that you have to understand. Blake Griffin is going to provide a different look, a player who can shoot three-point shots that they did not see in game one. You have to address Blake when he's on the floor. He's another guy, another prong attack, so to speak, that he can also get into the post and provide strong post play. And then the third thing I think Blake brings to this game that the Celtics didn't see in game one, a a very good passer and willing passer from the low post. So another element that the Celtics will have to defend that they didn't have to defend in game one. All right, Blake has cleared concussion protocol. Good to go here this afternoon. You know, Dwayne Casey says it all the time. How you start is also how you finish. And that was the Pistons recipe for success on Friday as we take a look back at our Ram breakdown, Grant. Absolutely. Getting off to a good start is always something that Coach Casey preaches to his basketball team. And you got rookies that are playing. So they're going to give you a lot of energy and that energy help to begin this ball game got off to an excellent start running in transition using that spirited energy to create baskets off of their defense and you see this drive to the basket the floor spacing was excellent for the Pistons and then you get to the middle part of the game the bench really came in and did a fine job excellent to see Steve McKaylook finally get connected with the basket he had been struggling up until that point but the other guys came in in a big way talked about the rookies earlier Isaiah Stewart Sadiq Bay. these guys were major contributors in the win on Friday and then you talk about defense putting it all together this team played a complete basketball game on friday night the defense in the fourth quarter was stout stopping uh, the celtics at the basket and also completing the defensive possession by rebounding the basketball look at this effort that's a terrific effort you might not think of it think a lot of it at that point but when you have a defender flying at you you have to be concerned about that good effort by the pistons in that fourth quarter and ultimately they came away with the victory yeah jeremy grant Derek rose and sadiq bay carried the scoring load for the pistons on friday night we'd expect all to be heavily involved again this afternoon. Speaking of Bay, we have a story coming up on what makes him tick and what makes him especially ready for this moment. I hope you'll stick around and watch it because I helped put it together, so it, that, that's worth it alone. <laughs> uh, the Pistons, though, I mean, they like all their rookies, and they've all showed flashes at times this season, but it's really hard not to like what Isaiah Stewart has brought to the floor so far this season. You know, if the good Lord mixed up a batch of Piston DNA, it would eventually produce Isaiah Stewart. Johnny Kane joins us now to mix it up for today's Miller Light Report. Johnny, if you can't tell, I really like Stewart. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> yeah. And I do too. I think we all do. And I know Pistons fans certainly do. Look, Isaiah Stewart has turned in three really good performances in a row uh, coming off the bench for the Pistons. Here's what we know. He was one of the highest rated centers coming out of college and to be honest, to be quite uh, frank with you, there wasn't an NBA scout out there that didn't talk about his workmanlike effort and the energy he brings. But a little bit of the backstory of Isaiah Stewart. We'll take you back to his high school years in Rochester, New York. Played his first couple of seasons in his hometown of Rochester, then transferred to La Lumiere in LaPorte, Indiana. Consensus, five-star recruit, a McDonald's All-American. In fact, he was ranked 
as the number two recruit by rivals coming out. He goes to Washington there, and you can see what he was able to do in one season there. First team all Pac-12 as a freshman, averaged 17 points per and eight rebounds, almost nine rebounds per game. Well, what happens? He gets an opportunity to go to the draft. I mentioned Pistons go up to get him, traded up to get him with the 16th overall pick. Leads the team in offensive rebounds per game at four per game. And what do you say about rebounding? It's got to be in your DNA. You got to want to rebound. And Isaiah Stewart loves rebound. I love rebounding the ball. Um, something important, uh, and I know it's going to be important for his team as well. Um, and I feel like we control the boards. You know, I'm chasing after the ball. Um, you know, even on the oak glass, you know, I'm trying to get every rebound. Uh, it's just, to me, that's exciting. Um, you know, outworking the next man, getting that rebound. And uh, that can lead to a lot of things. You know, extra possession, um, a clutch shot. So, uh, you know, that's my mindset is attacking and controlling the boards. When you talk about that, and I've heard this comparison already, but Ben Wallace comes to mind. He was that kind of player here. Are, are those comparisons fair? Do you see some of Ben Wallace in your game, or? Uh, you know, I say it's in you know most I say most humble way, um, and, and everything. But Ben Wallace is great, so I don't I don't want those comparisons because he's in his own world. You know, um, Hall of Famer, Jersey retired, and everything. So uh, I admire um, Big Ben game. I've been watching, you know, a ton of it and uh, just see how, you know, um, how competitive he was. You know, how he loved to get his nose dirty um, and he did everything he can to help the team win, which whether it was rebounding, stopping the best player. Uh, so I admire his game. And uh, to me, Big Ben is in his own lane. So I'm going to just work hard and, uh, you know, continue to study certain things he did. But, um, you know, he's uh, phenomenal. You know, rumor has it they've already started moving dirt to erect the Isaiah Stewart statue outside of Little Caesars Arena here, Mickey York. But no, uh, in all reality, he says that he and Big Ben have talked on the phone. They have yet to meet in person. But look, Pistons fans, we love our players. We love our former players. And if you're a young man who's only played five games, well, he's only been in three games to this point, and people are starting to draw those comparisons and your head coach is drawing comparisons because of your workmanlike attitude to a guy like Big Ben, uh, you're trending in the right direction and certainly you'll fall in good favor of the Pistons faithful.